Hey, it's Neil from Nature's Light. I'm back again with another very brief tutorial on Capture One, and this time the latest iteration, Capture One 23. So this is a little bit late out of the starting gates, but that's because I was in Namibia when um, Phase One actually announced their Capture One 23, the latest upgrade. So I only really got a chance to play with it once I got back to the studio. Let me pause there for a moment. Capture One launched its speed editing tool along with Capture Pro 21 back in November 2020. So I've actually been using it for the last year or so, but as with a number of these things, I've only gotten around to doing the tutorial now. On we go. And I was fairly impressed with one particular feature, and that is the speed edit. Now, I'm coming to you from my dining room for a particular reason. Rather than working on my usual Mac Pro, I've actually decided to stick around with my very small um, MacBook Air M1. Now, these laptops are great for travel, as I was doing last month, but the inherent problem that they have is itty bitty editing space whenever you're putting anything up on the stage and you're actually working on an image itself. So if I go through, for instance, to this image over here, let me just quickly jump into a photograph and I go into the develop section, so I go adjust, you'll see that I've got a very small piece of screen with rather large tabs on the left and the right. And yes, you can minimize and you can make them smaller and you can change the layout of your actual uh, display screen, but the problem is it's still is very little editing space available to you. So what Capture One have done is they've come out with the speed edit. Now, anybody who's familiar with um, Capture One already knows that you can get quite far into your image simply by doing an auto adjust. And I'm a keyboard shortcut fan. So essentially all you do is you hit Command L and the image should, in theory, get better. And you can even change what you want to have adjusted by simply going up to your auto adjust tab once you're in the adjust section, clicking on the drop down menu, and you can select all of the various bits and pieces that you would like done. So for instance, I could say, I want my white balance sorted out, I want my exposure sorted out, I want my contrast and brightness sorted out, and then maybe high dynamic range. There we go. Uh, so let's try that again with Command L, and there's the change it's done. I don't like what it's done to the white balance personally, so I'm going to go out from that, and in fact, I'm going to go back to where I was originally. So what I tend to do with my auto adjust is I just play with the exposure, contrast, and brightness. That's it. And maybe pretend, oh, sorry, levels. Let me go to levels, contrast, and brightness, and I'll say auto adjust, and there we go. I'm pretty happy with that. I think my shadows in this particular image are a little bit too crunched, but um, anyway, that's where we'll go with it. Now. The problem, of course, is that after that, you've then got to go into your sliders and start working with the sliders until now. Now what we've got is keyboard shortcuts that you can then go into so that you don't have to look at the sliders themselves. You can simply use the keyboard shortcut and then your mouse trackpad, or mouse, or in my case, my Wacom tablet and its stylus. One of the core reasons why this is a really useful ability with our software though, is I can now go into full screen mode. So I'm gonna hit F. Now suddenly I have a great big photograph inside my viewer, taking up the full 13 inches of real estate on the screen itself. So if I'm edit editing on a laptop, that's great. And here comes the joy of fast editing. We can now say, if I wanna adjust my exposure, hold down the Q button and you'll notice at the bottom you've got a slider that comes up and you can either grab that slider and drag to the left or the right or you can just simply go anywhere on the screen and drag to the left or the right. So I can now say okay I want to darken it just a touch over there. Great. W, next one on the line, is going to be my contrast. So if I want to increase my contrast or decrease my contrast I can do the same thing again. E is going to be my brightness. So I'll bring up my brightness a little bit over there. R is going to be saturation. So it's not that they're necessarily aligned to a particular key, keyboard shortcut, so you'd think S for saturation. It's rather just the four top um, keys on a QWERTY keyboard are exposure, contrast, brightness, and saturation. And then the four below are going to be highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. So for instance, if I think my highlights are too um, bright over here, I hit the A button and I can pull them back. There we go. If I needed to open up my shadows over there, I hit my S button and I'm going to pull it out just a little bit to the right. So it's a really, really simple way to be able to very quickly edit on a very small 
piece of real estate as a screen. Of course, you're not limited to only using this on small laptops like I've done over here. When I'm working on my big 27 inch screen attached to a Mac Pro, I can still do the same thing. I can go into a full screen view and I can use my keyboard shortcuts and slider that appears simply to be able to make my edits. I'm not um, influenced by the bump that's on either side and it basically streamlines your workflow. If you want more controls accessible to your keyboard shortcuts, so uh, for instance, for my what we would call speed editing, all you need to do is go into um, edit, edit keyboard shortcuts, and you will now see that you've got speed edit keys on the right hand side, whereas shortcut keys used to be the only thing we had. So now I will go into speed edit keys and you can see there are all of my different shortcuts. So for instance, Kelvin is going to be one, Tint is going to be two. If I want to change my clarity, it's Z. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Z is also zoom in. So the trick with speed edit keys is to press and hold. A little bit like the scrubby zoom in Photoshop, except it's no longer a zoom. So if I want to just change to my zoom control, I hit Z and it gives me zoom control. If I want to change to clarity, I hold down Z and you will see that I actually end up with a completely different control over there. So if you are a fan of shortcut keys, this is a fantastic and fast way to be able to work with your images. And it's particularly useful if you are encumbered with a teensy weensy screen that you're going to have to work with. Most of us are usually going to be behind a big monitor inside our studios. However, if we're traveling, which is often the case, or you're starting out and you just have a small laptop, this is a fantastic way to be able to get a big, bigger view of your image while you're working on it. So just remember to, re to learn or to change your keyboard short uh, cuttings, short, your keyboard shortcuts. All you do is you go to edit, edit keyboard shortcuts, Make sure your speed edit keys are clicked on and you can choose all the various different pieces over there. And you can even continue and add further shortcut keys. The critical thing is if you press and hold, it's a speed edit key. And if you just press once quickly, it's going to be a shortcut key. Nice and simple. Okay, if you liked this tip and I will be trying to do some more, remember to drop a like and a subscribe into the corner of the box. Uh, I will try and do more of these. I'm also particularly interested in the, um, the speed edit in terms of speed culling that has been added to Capture 123. It makes it that much more of a usable uh, program. I'm not going to go into the fairly contentious um, email that Capture One users were given, basically saying that the perpetual licensing is coming to an abrupt end. Uh, I'll have more to say on that in the coming weeks with any luck, and certainly we'll have more clarity as to where Capture One is going in terms of its pricing come February 2023. Until then, I hope you're enjoying Capture One. I certainly think it's a fantastic program, uh, and I hope to catch you on the flip side. Cheers.